Hey, you should do an episode on the jump tack. They're like the coolest birds ever. Hey, I heard you want to do an episode about badass chicks of history. You should do one on Lillian Virginia Mount Weasel. I liked your video about words, but you should have included Esquivalians. Mr. Ed was actually a zebra. You should do a video about copyright traps. That would be kind of cool. Good idea. Plagiarism has been an issue for longer than we think and in more fields than we might think. According to lexicographer Grant Barrett, plagiarizers used to steal whole sections of the dictionary. Whole sections of the dictionary! He was referring to a time in the 1700s, but still, wow. Anyway, the people who create reference materials like dictionaries and encyclopedias and maps have a creative way to ensnare would-be plagiarists. This is more difficult than you would think because if you and your rival are both right about something, you pretty much have the same information. The new Columbia Encyclopedia of 19 1975 included one entry about one Lillian Virginia Mountweasel, who was a fountain designer turned photographer and gained fame through her series Flags Up, which concentrated exclusively on the rural American mailbox. It did well abroad, but sadly Ms. Mountweasel's life was cut short while she was on assignment for Combustibles magazine. Sound fake? It should. It's a copyright trap meant specifically to ensnare plagiarists of the New Columbia Encyclopedia. In fact, it's the mother of all copyright traps. These days, many in the publishing world refer to fake reference entries as mount weasels. The occurrence of mount weasels actually predate that entry. A particularly well-known example is the Jungftag. Okay, it's actually supposed to be Persian, so I really shouldn't be pronouncing it like it's German, but it's a fake word, just go with it. Jungftags are one-winged birds where the male has a hook and the female has an eyelet, and they can only fly while they are connected. Kind of awesome, maybe mythical, but any cryptozoologist worth their degree in pseudoscience will tell you that it's from Webster's 20th Century Dictionary. In the 21st century, word leaked that the 2005 New Oxford American Dictionary contained a wild mount weasel. The New Yorker joined the hunt for it, and soon it was confirmed that the word in question was esquivalience. In the words of New Oxford's editor-in-chief, Aaron McKean, quote, its inherent fictitude is fairly obvious. Dictionaries and encyclopedias don't have a copyright on ficitude, of course. Cartographers have paper towns, paper streets, and trap streets, which are all fictional locations in case a rival copies their map. The location Algo, New York is a notable example that went from fake to not fake to fake again. It was, of course, popularized by John Green in his novel Paper Towns, the FTVA. Finally, in the digital age, copyright traps have moved on. Kind of. Snopes.com, the bane of urban legends everywhere, has an elaborate entry on one TV personality horse, Mr. Ed. It seems that he was actually a zebra. He was not. And finally, search engine giant Google ran a code copying sting operation on rival Bing. Between the end of 2010 and early 2011, Google created over 100 synthetic search queries like... Yeah, not even going to try to say that. These queries would have manually entered results that had nothing to do with the search term. After these were implemented, similar results started showing up in Bing. So the trap worked then? Yep. Actually, no. It's complicated. For more information about Google, Microsoft's Bing, and everything else, we've got links below. And as always, for more barely relevant but still really interesting topics, you can subscribe to our channel right there. And if we don't update fast enough for you, you can always like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter for more interesting, useless information.